For those who don't know, Live365.com is a hub for internet. You're able to actually launch a station through them or transmit through them using their server. Now, the really, really cool part about them is it's media-based tracking. Now, for all the artists who don't know, media-based tracking means that if your music is played with any of the Live365 affiliates, then you will get points towards royalties for your radio play if your music is properly registered through BMI, ASCAP, or CSAC. All right? Now, our station is Ride95. Ride95, that's our station. Now, the way to access our station is easy. All you got to do is go to Ride. All you got to do is go to Live365.com. All right? Live365.com. Go to their search engine. Once you're in their search engine, type in Ride95. That's R-I-D-E, the number 9, the number 5. Okay? Click on our station logo, and you'll have music 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Okay? All right. Now, if you want to check us out via your mobile device, it's also just as easy. All you got to do is download the Live365 app. Once you download the app, once you download the app, then go to the search engine, type in ride, type in the number 9, the number 5, Click on the logo, and again, music 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Got to say one time for everybody checking us out on Facebook Live, man. Definitely love you guys. Y'all could be doing anything, but you're rocking with us. Also got to say one time for the home team, man. One time for my Atlanta Hawks. The Atlanta Hawks just took game one of that series with the Milwaukee Bucks. The Atlanta Hawks has never, ever made it to the NBA Finals, and hopefully this will be the year. All right, man, so let's get into it, man. We got a guest online, definitely, definitely holding on. Y'all know what it is right here on the Riding Dirty Show. This is a platform for the people who are definitely moving, shaking, and changing the world with us through arts, entertainment, philanthropism. If you're just a downright good person and you're making a difference, this is a platform for you. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, tonight is no different than any other night on the Riding Dirty Show. So welcome to the platform, my guy, Blue with the three. What's going on, my G? What's going on, brother? Everything all right? Man, maintaining, sitting back, kicking it. My Atlanta Hawks just took game one in this best of seven from the Milwaukee Bucks. So, you know, feeling kind of good. What about you? It's about time for them Hawks. <laughs> I'm just chilling. I was watching Drink Champs. Okay, all right. Which episode of Drink Champs? What, what's going on on Drink Champs? I was watching the episode with Russell Peters and uh, Freddie Fox. Okay. All right. One time I had already caught up on all the other ones. All right. One time for Freddie Fox. Freddie Fox, actually, a lot of people don't know, but Ice Cube has a late, late night. Ice-T has a late night show. It's kind of like a judge show. And um, Freddie Fox is one of the people on the show. So one time for Freddie Fox has definitely been in the game for a long, long time. All right. But enough of that, man. Let's. The first thing I want to say is thank you for coming on the show, taking the opportunity and the time to talk to us. Um, I'm very humbled to have you. No problem. I appreciate you having me on the show, man. All right, so let's get into it. Blue with the three. Let the world know, first and foremost, where are you from? I'm from Florida, Bride, Bride County, Hollywood, Florida. All right, now. One time for Bride County, man. Okay. Now, we all know Florida for years has been a hotbed, a melting pot for hip-hop. Bride County, home of uh, Poison Clan. Home of Poison Clan, I think. Am I correct? Poison Clan Por out, of, out of Florida. Poison Clan. All right. Oh, they might be out of Florida. They ain't out of Broad County. They went from Broad. Was Luke from Broad County? Yeah, Luke from Miami. Okay. Uncle Luke from Miami. That's right next door. Okay. All right. Kodak what? Black from Broad County. Okay. Kodak Black. Uh, Coleon. Cole T. They they from Broad County. All right. Ace Hood. All right. No doubt. No doubt. So Broad County. And the entire Florida scene is rich 
with people who've been definitely contributing to the hip hop game for years. What's it like growing up in Florida or Broward County? I don't even know if we got enough time for that, but in Broward, it's diversified. You got a little bit of everybody in Broward. You got your Haitians, Jamaicans, Cubans, African Americans. So it's a lot of culture in Broward. I'm pretty sure it's like any other hood in America, you know, it's dog eat dog. But it's a beautiful scene, man. We got a lot of things for tourists. If you want to come, we got beautiful beaches. Taco Tuesdays, Margaritaville. We got the hard rock, the guitar, Hollywood, Brad County, where it's at. All right. When did you realize that you had a talent to pursue this hip hop game? Well, before I started rapping, I was writing poems. And when I made the decision to turn a poem into a rap, that's when I said, man, I can do this. It's easier than, than it looked. Trick myself with that. It was way, way harder. See, with this, you got to gotta really feel it so other people can feel you. It's, it's about what you're delivering and being able to put your message out there in a way that other people can feel what you're saying and learn from it or grow from it. And when, and it's the love of that. If you don't got that love, you can't, you can't be successful in this. And that's a love that's deep. It's embedded. Okay. Now, who are some of your influences? Like who are some of the people you grew up watching? Well, uh, I'm a 90 baby, so, you know, I grew up listening to Wayne, the whole hot boy scene, Webby, Boosie, but I'm, my key, like, person I try to emulate was Tupac, because he embodied that, that, his, his character. Okay, all right. All right, man, mentioning Tupac, I got to ask, because, you know, Tupac made so many people feel so many different ways. He in, invoked and invoked the emotions of a, a whole country, even to this day. How did you feel when you found out Tupac passed? I, mean, I was, what, four years old? So okay. I doubt I really even had an understanding of what was going on. Okay, okay, okay. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. All right, then, what from Tupac and his lyrics and his no, music? What about Tupac that made you gravitate to him? The pain. The, what, the things he said helped. It let you know that he really feel you. He helped you understand he came from where you came from. Sometimes he angry. And he knew how to how to express that. Other times, he may have felt loving and wanted to show a more tender side to a woman. He knew how to express that. Sometimes he just wanted to be OG and give you some game. So it was it was that that big brother, a of, of uncle, a father figure that he presented in the music that make that I think that'll make any person that grew up in the hood gravitate if you're looking for a role model, somebody that can connect to you because. You went out the same way. Some days we mad, some days we ain't. And his music helped you go through these days. Okay, definitely, no doubt, no doubt. Now, it's blue with the three, but it's really so blue. Tell me the science behind that name. Like, how did that name come about for you? <laughs> well, the soul is like, the past experiences that structure your current reality. So the soul is the feeling of the music and 3LU is 
the way I spell blue is like an acronym. It's love, loyalty, and leadership bringing unity. And that, and that's a large part of the struggle that I talk about in my music. I talk about love. I talk about loyalty. I talk, talk about being a leader, more or less, what it takes to be a leader. It's, it's it's, the, it's my actions. My name is more of my actions. I tried to find the best way to put who I was into a name and do the name I already had. I just remixed it. Okay. All right. Now, when you first decided to basically jump off the porch and get into the hip-hop game, what were some of the most important things for you knowing that you were going to start out being, knowing that you're an independent artist? When I took it serious for real, I was just getting out of prison for the second time. And I told myself, I got to do something different. I had been writing already and told myself, I got to just put it all on the line. And that's, that's, that's what I did. I, uh, one of somebody I grew up with, a right here, man, he always made beats. I locked myself in the studio with him, just kept recording and recording. And it's like anything that you take time with, eventually you master it. And it's like you find yourself mastering your craft after you spend so much time on it. And that's just all I did. I just kept working and working. My mom got behind me and her boyfriend, and, and we said we're going to start our own independent little label and we're going to push it. And my mom has been a real strong factor. My momager and her husband, you know, it's, it takes a lot, though. All right, now. Because it's, it's a continual decision. It's, it's not a decision you just make, and then it's like it's a decision you got to continue making. It get hard. All right, now. Being that your mom is is part of the movement, part of the label, what's it like working with family? It's a, it's a headache. <laughs> A headache. It's definitely a headache. But but you know, it's a good headache. Sometimes, you know, people not going it's like the the uh people places things uh you know how people say change people places and things. Mm -hmm. It's like that, you know. It's it's a it's a it's a headache in a good and bad way because you know, when your mom is your mom, she only see you as, you know, how she gonna see you. So it's like you working extra hard to be recognized as who you already is when other people already recognize it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Now, you said your mom is a, is a major part, um, especially when it comes to the pursuit of, of the success and the fame and the movement. How much does she push you to get to that next level? She definitely be pushing hard. Okay. She pushed real hard. All right, now. Just, See, that's why it's a good headache. Uh, no doubt, no doubt, man, because I know any self-respecting son does not want to let his mother down under no circumstances. That's true. That's definitely true. All right, now, you mentioned that you started to take your career serious after your second stint in prison. Um, if you don't mind, can you talk a little bit about the experiences you learned while in prison and how you've applied them to your current life today? Patience is a virtue. When you're in a place where you can't do nothing but think, you learn how to self-reflect. And, and, you know, every connection of reflection, being in spots like that, you learn to appreciate your freedom. But, you know, when you become free, you just apply the time that you used while you was there with the time you got now. Because it's like, you know, you got a lot of people in there that is doing time. They're not using it. Now, and, you know, to the listeners, if you're in that type of position, but end up in that position, use your time. Don't waste it. Use it because you can't get it back. So you got to cultivate the only thing that you can never lose, and that's self. 
And right now, that's 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 been a major push because when you know the most important thing is what you have, you you, you cherish it, and other people around you cherish it. Okay. Now, I've been pushing me. I've been staying connected. No doubt. Now, being an independent artist, man, being an independent artist, that's a real deal struggle. What have been some of the most important things you've learned being an independent artist, especially when it comes to the do's and the don'ts? Marketing, you got to know how to market your project. And when you when you going into a project, you got to you got to steal your P's and Q's because nobody really knows what you're trying to create better than you. And then a lot of these these major companies, like you know, people say BMI, little BMI, ASCAP, like as a, when you independent you find yourself in battles with the type of companies for your money so it's like you got to make sure you got the proper like uh that's the word i'm looking for like lawyers you gotta have the proper people around you that's going to execute in their position like you gotta have a team nobody can do it by themselves you know everybody need help if you're dealing with independent and getting your revenue, sometimes you won't hit roadblocks when you're trying to use those major distribution companies and you're not, for lack of better terms, a major priority to them like you are to yourself. Okay. Also, as an independent artist, you mentioned the word team and you mentioned you work with your mother. How important is that team and that business structure for an independent artist? very important most people that's independent artists like personally myself i know i got characteristic flaws that i need people on my team to step in and okay that's their role to play because you're better at this than me you know what i'm saying as an artist i want to focus on my music, I want to focus on my craft. You know what I mean? So that team is very important because my mom, she can handle management. She can talk to people that I can't talk to because I I can articulate very well, but I ain't gonna lie to you. I got like three screws missing and, and, and two of them loose. <laughs> so, so I only can, you know, do it for so long. Okay, okay, definitely, definitely. So, and then that also goes back to you said patience. Patience is very, very important in this game. And that's what I've been working on. All right, let's talk a little bit about Soul, Soul Blue, the artist. Tell people what they can expect when they hear your music. To be honest, I hope they're ready because it's been a major transition in the direction of my music and the sound, my delivery, everything, my cadence. So I hope they're ready. You know what I mean? They can expect greatness. They can expect the Black Rose, which is the project that's being worked on right now. Right now. And I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's going to take a lot of people by surprise. Because I'm aiming, I'm aiming, I'm aiming for something that might seem a little far fetched, but Pop Smoke say, shoot for the moon, aim for the stars. So let's go. Okay. Why'd you choose that title, Black Rose? <laughs> well, it's also an acronym. And. The Black Rose is, is, is Brothers Lives Are Connected continue rising over su suppression. So it's like I chose the title because I want everybody to grow. 
the Black Rose is like a growth process. On that on that project, I'm really showing my wounds and my scars, and it's my healing process to make sure that you know I'm growing. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people got those same scars. You know, the rose takes sun and rain to grow. So I'm hoping that you know, just like it helped me, it help other people. Okay. All right. Real quick before we get more into the music, you've partnered up with Scott Boy Music Group. Tell me a little bit about that relationship. It's a good relationship, you know. That's who we're really trying to handle the financial part and part of getting the money from these, from because we had a major distribution partnership through Scott Boy. So, like they, they've been working hard on their behalf, and you know, where everybody hit roadblocks. They had coronavirus, and I had just ran into another incident. Ninety seconds on the road. Okay. It, just, it, was, it was one thing after another. Right now, we're getting back on the horse. All right, no doubt. All right, so look, let's talk about these two records we're about to play for the people. All right, we got one uh, that's called Fallen Angel, and we've got one entitled Bust It Open. Uh, let's talk about Fallen Angel. What's the concept, and who's the actual producer? 60 seconds. Fallen Angel is... A song I recorded. The producer to that song, to that beat, uh, I can't remember. I ain't gonna lie to you. I recorded that song in like 2000. And 15, when I first came home. But that song right there is really, that's the first song I really made and tried to be open. You understand what I'm trying to say? Like, I was really open on that song. Okay. As far as myself and experience, life experience. All right, and we're also going to give them Bust It Open. Tell me a little bit about that one. Ten seconds. Bust It Open is more recent. I recorded that with an artist named Cartel with a K. He's from New York. He's from the Nine. One time for the Nine. And that's a club banger. You know, that's 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 a club banger. So it's me and Cartel with a K. Okay. It's reduced by somebody he, he affiliated with. Okay. Now, before we get up out of here, I got one last question for you. How has social media and the World Wide Web affected how you market and promote your music to people who are outside your personal get in my car and go see? World Wide Web is a major part of, of promotion. That's something that you need in order to reach further than your own community. It's a necessity. It's been it's 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 a major factor. It's been a major key. You know, and myself, I've been learning how to utilize it. I you know, it's a blessing when you got people around you that that that's more savvy with it than you that that give you the time to promote your stuff for you. That's a blessing. Because, you know, that social media is a major key right now. It's like if you're not popping on social media, you're not really popping nowhere because that's where everybody's going, especially with coronavirus, nobody really being able to come outside. That's the major focus right there. Okay. Now, before I have you introduce those two records, let people know how to find you on the World Wide Web. Well... Uh, um, Instagram is BMM underscore three LU. That's BMM underscore three LU. On Facebook is Black Rose, B L A C C R O S E, blue. But on, you know, on Facebook is what it be, B L U. If you want to find me on any streaming platform anywhere, you put on Soul Blue. S O U L 3 L U. Every platform you can think about. All right. Do me one favor. I'm going to play both those records. I want you to announce the records to the world, and the order you announce the records is the order I'm going to play them. 
Well, we gonna turn them up first with Busted Open. That's me featuring Cartel with a K from the Nine, New York, stand up from Bride County, California, the Bride, all the way up. Everybody stand up, Busted Open. So blue. All right, then the next one gonna give them is gonna be Fallen Angel. Me by myself. I'm opening up, so I need y'all to feel me. Cause I feel y'all pain, so ride with me. All right. Appreciate it, my G.